gentlemen, and welcome to All the World's Worst. I'm Nicholas Purcell, and... Yeah. If you're going to spend your time making fun of other people's work, you should be able to make fun of your own as well. Which is why today, we'll be taking a look at a story I wrote when I was much younger called The Ghost in the Basement. I originally wrote it to enter in a local ghost story writing contest, and you will soon see why I lost. Here we go. The Ghost in the Basement by Nicholas Purcell Billy looked out the window of his house. When was Fred going to get here? Billy didn't want to wait for the sleepover, but he had been doing exactly this forever, or at least for an hour. He could hardly take it. If Fred was going to come, he would have to come now. Billy was jumping up and down. You should know something about Billy. He is very impatient. Finally, a shiny silver van drove onto the driveway. Billy sighed with relief. A sandy-haired kid hopped out of the van. He had a big smile and rosy cheeks. It was Fred, all right. Billy rushed out of the house to greet him. What took you so long, asked Billy. Fred looked at him strangely. I'm early, he said. Is your clock off again? Billy had a big old grandfather clock in his living room. It had a glass door in front with a pendulum inside. One day, Billy's cat, Butterscotch, found her way into the clock. When they finally found her, the clock was sort of broken. It never worked the same way again. Anyway, the clock isn't a big part of the story. The cat is, though. Yesterday, Billy and Fred had planned out the whole sleepover. They would skip supper, be crazy, and play video games. Then they would eat jujubes and watch horror movies for the rest of the night. But today, Billy's mom said supper is good for you. Being crazy would break something, Billy was grounded from video games, they were out of jujubes, and they were too young to watch horror movies. Billy couldn't believe his ears, he was too young for horror movies? He and Fred were 12 years old! This was going to be the worst sleepover ever! Billy and Fred had to fight their way through a glob of liver and onions for supper. It was gross. They needed something to get the taste out of their mouths. What's for dessert? asked Fred. The nerve! thought Billy's mom. What she actually said was, There is none, dear. Billy and Fred left the table. Billy sighed. What would they do now? Butterscotch was a skinny orange cat. Billy and Fred tried to amuse themselves by pulling her tail. She hissed and scratched at them. She ran away. Billy was sad. This sleepover was a bummer. Evan Butterscotch was angry. Her tail hurt. This is what she was thinking. Meow, hiss, hiss, meow, purr, meow, hiss, purr. I'll translate that for you. I will have my revenge. Billy and Fred set up their sleeping bags in the basement playroom. There were four rooms in the basement. There was the playroom, the office, the workroom, and the rec room. The playroom was the best. It had a computer. Computers were all Billy cared about. If you gave him a book, he would probably wonder what it was. Actually, he does know what a book is, but he does not approve. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, dears, I thought I'd make this sleepover more exciting for you. Look what I got, said Billy's mom, who just walked into the playroom. She held up two brand new books. Uh, gee, thanks, I guess, said Fred. Books? asked Billy. You know how much I don't like books. Billy's mom gave him a quick glare. She walked out of the room. What were the book titles anyway? Billy looked at them. One said, Barney the Dinosaur, and the other one was in some weird language that they couldn't make out. A half an hour later, Billy's mom came to the playroom again. Bedtime, she said. Bedtime, asked Billy. It's only seven o'clock. You need your sleep, said Billy's mom. Good night. Billy's mom turned off the lights as she left the room. Fred couldn't believe it. Your mom treats us like five-year-olds, he said. Billy was asleep. He was dreaming his dreams. He snored loudly. He wouldn't be asleep for long, though. He woke to the sound of a strange noise. Fred was awake, too. Did you hear that? he asked. Billy nodded. He looked around. He didn't see anything. He was about to lie down to go back to sleep when he heard it again. It was closer this time. Billy and Fred were terrified. It's a ghost, cried Fred. We're doomed. 
Shh, said Billy. He picked up a flashlight from a little drawer and clicked it on. A circle of light flooded the room. Let's go investigate, he said. Billy handed Fred another flashlight. They quietly walked out of the room. Let's split up, said Billy. What? asked Fred. You heard me. Billy went into the workroom. Fred went into the office. Me. There was a thunderstorm outside. Billy tried to turn on the lights, but he realized the power was out. The only light was from the flashlight. Billy shined it at the floor. Suddenly, a loud crash sounded. Boom! It wasn't the thunder from the outside. The crash came from the inside. Then, Billy heard the sound again. Mew. Billy turned around. He knew immediately what caused the crashing sound. A toolbox had fallen to the floor. But what had pushed it? Fred noticed the power was out too. This made him even more scared. Fred isn't the bravest of kids. Just then, Fred heard footsteps. Billy, he called. There was no answer. Fred looked around the room. He didn't see anything. Billy had gone to investigate the rec room. He didn't see too much, but what he did see was scary enough. A small white shape was moving across the floor. Mew. Billy ran screaming to the office. He told Fred what he had seen. They both ran up the stairs to Billy's parents' room. They shook Billy's mom awake. There's a ghost in the basement, they cried. Billy's mom was none too pleased. I told you not to watch those horror movies, didn't I? Now go back to sleep. Billy was experiencing true terror. Though they didn't want to, he and Fred went back to the basement. They tried to go back to sleep, but they couldn't. Then they heard... Billy and Fred ran out the basement door. They ran out the back door too. Then they looked into the basement window from the outside. Is it still there? asked Fred. I don't know, answered Billy. Then they saw the small white shape coming towards the window. Me They saw two glowing green eyes on the shape. Me Billy and Fred screamed and ran away from the window. They sat down on the grass. This is where they slept for the rest of the night. They were even too scared to go back to get their sleeping bags. The next morning, Billy had a stiff back. So did Fred. When his parents came to pick him up, he turned to Billy and said, that was the worst sleepover ever. Billy felt awful. His first sleepover ever had been terrible. He would never have a sleepover again. He ran inside. He was too sad to do anything. Butterscotch was lying on her white blanket when Billy started petting her. Wait a minuet, thought Billy. The blanket was about the same size as the small shape last night, and Butterscotch's eyes looked familiar. You, said Billy. Purr, hiss, hiss, purr, hiss, hiss, meow, said Butterscotch. I'll translate that for you. I got you. I got you good. The end. Oh, hey everyone. I hope you mm. Mm. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.